Welcome to Momentum Monday. Today is February 7th, 2021. Howard, when are you moving to uh, Tampa? Yeah, it was quite a game. I had a lot of calories. It was a terrible game. The, uh, the markets are a little more exciting than NFL uh, football. So let's get right to it. What do you, uh, what are you seeing? All right, let me just uh, share my screen. Looks like you're uh, locked in a dungeon. Uh, well, my light lighting is not great. I guess I need to buy a new new lamp or something. Uh, last week, what we saw is that all the meme stocks that uh, went to the moon the previous week, they basically crashed, and then the rest of the market bounced. Mm -hmm. So last week was a mirror image of the previous week. Uh, in a way, mm -hmm. we definitely saw a uh, substantial bounce in so many momentum stocks. I saw so many 20 to 30 percent uh, bounces in a week. So that uh, that pullback to the 20 to the 50 day moving average in the in the main in main indices, the S and P, the Nasdaq 100. <clears throat> yeah, I I mean ended up just another great. Uh, deep buying opportunity. Uh, all of them back to new all-time highs. Uh, and this time, they're not just led by um, but the usual uh, clean energy stocks, but you know there are other teams that are starting to show up. Obviously, small caps are still super strong uh, as interest rates are spiking. Financials are strong, but at the same time, you we also see inflation plays like um, home builders, residential constructions, they're starting to wake up and break out just wow. normal, as you know, yeah. just what's going on around, around the world, not only in the U.S. Um, there's such demand for, uh, for homes. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's only natural to see home builders uh, uh, break out. Um, what else? Um, marijuana stocks, cannabis stocks, super strong again. Uh, another. Strong. Love when you say marijuana. The uh, well, last week I was a little bit worried. I said I was going to take the week off and watch um, just to see how this GME. Wow, that's a good looking chart right there. What is that? The effing. Uh, the previous one was the MJ. That not the. Oh. One of the many uh, cannabis uh, ETFs, they're like six or seven at this point. <laughs> that are, game up thing. I mean, that's what I was worried about with that carry over with the crash of it. I knew it would crash. I mean, it was so dumb. Hold the line may be the dumbest thing to tell young traders. They're playing a game, a game of financial chicken and lolling their newbies to play a game. The dumbest game to play in the markets when everybody's a pirate. So can you can we zoom in on that? Oh, this is the daily. I mean, I can open the yeah, six, whatever well, time frame you want. Awesome. So here's the, here's the thing. Sixty minutes. Here's the thing. And what the hell are people thinking? There's like I was saying, there's so many great companies, but just when you hear, if you're getting your ideas from the internet, is one thing. But when you are, when you have a chant like "Hold the line" in an era when the last thing you should be doing <laughs> is having group think around a stock. So this will go down as another great uh, lesson for people. Um, is while you were distracted, including myself, I, I, I got worried that this would carry over into, into the market and, and guess what? Now we see this week with the, the fangs breaking out Google, um, that maybe the market just continues to be stronger than most people think. You know, um, I think I was talking to Ram, who runs a crossover fund, a really smart guy. I've had him on my podcast. But if we go back to Google, and I guess Microsoft, but Google, because I don't own Microsoft, if you think about the, the economy opening up, Google is the most diversified. Uh, I think of the fangs connected to the internet. So Facebook has its own internet, but as people leave their homes and as economy needs to start spending money on ads to get customers into their stores, uh, I think we're seeing 
you know, Google and Apple probably having the best opportunity um, to have a great year, you know, and uh, as a top five holding and one of my eight to eighties, I'm happy to see Google finally. What do you think about Jeff Bezos uh, retiring? I think it was smart. Like, I mean, if we think about that, I mean, it's a genius move on many levels. He's not, uh, he can always come back, first of all. Um, you know, it takes the pressure. I mean, it's no different than, than me at Stocktoids. Rishi's a great CEO, and I get to talk to him and talk about strategy. Uh, Bezos, it's been, it's been a grind. Um, I think the Washington Post acquisition probably a bit more headache than good for him. And, um, you know, it's brought the, the company under the crossfire. And so good, for, good on him. Like, I think, look at the stock, it looks great. I mean, if you had told us, if you had said two years ago, or in March, if he had made that announcement, the stock wouldn't be at 3,300 bucks probably. So he's leaving while the economy is improving. He's leaving, you know, when the, when the company's doing well. And it's also at a time when everybody's, you know, out to get them. So it'll take some of the pressure off the company. So I think kudos. Uh, maybe Jack will just be CEO of a third company <laughs> at the same time. Maybe, yeah. But I was going to get to that because Twitter looks interesting to me. Because yeah, very strong, definitely. So Very strong. Um, you move to your highs. And, and relatively, I mean, basically it's in an all-time high. I mean... You know, that IPO juice, we're, we're despite the guffaws of this company, um, it still has not executed well. Uh, they've lost short form video. They, you know, they gave up. I don't think that product was that great anyways, but they lost, you know, between TikTok, um, between uh, uh, Pinterest, between Instagram, and now with Clubhouse, um, but at the same time, it's still the most used product by me, still the most used product by journalists. So as a media empire, and I think we're seeing this with Trump, like I always said that the sooner they get rid of Trump, the better for the company. And now you're seeing that, like it didn't hurt. It's fun to see trending and actually not know what's going to be trending, right? Versus going to trending and having a shit feeling in your stomach that it was gonna be something that the idiot was saying. And so this, he, had a, he had this, he cast a spell over media and I think the Twitter relief rally could take the stock, could double. I mean, I'm not in it at the moment, I don't know, you know, tiny amount of shares and uh, insignificant, but I'm really thinking about it. And then the other one that's interesting are uh, I think the biotechs. Right. Yeah, it was, it just continue, biotech, yes. They continue to be a risk on type of thing. And so, you know, last week, like I said, I was just going to watch, but I mean, whoa, they're just not stopping. So you got the drug companies, you got healthcare, you got banks. Yes. I mean, all, all the gene editing stocks were so strong and there you have some of the newer ones. Um, that have been on absolute fire. I mean, they went from one to you know twenty five, uh, like wow. MK and Fade. You have like the older ones like um, Edit and NTOA and um, Crisp, kind of setting up again. Yeah, Crisp um, is definitely setting up. Uh, bounces near their their fifty day. Uh -huh. A lot of new and interesting names in the biotech space, um, showing strength. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I told you, I only play it through the indexes because I just don't have an edge other than technical analysis. That's just not good enough for me um, for real money. I still I still like to understand the catalyst, and um, <clears throat> but the gaming stocks have broken out. Like if you know, yeah. Activision broke out, which I own. Oh, sorry, you're going to the fan. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I mean. Yeah. But I, I'm talking about take two in Activision. I mean, look at that breakout. I'm long Activision. Look at that breakout. Um, take two looks like it may break out. Yeah, I mean, they report 
tomorrow. So yeah, but again, like I said, everybody's in the boat. There is no. There was the best inflow, the biggest inflow ever for money into the Nasdaq 100. So it's not like nobody knows about this. But at the same time, I, you know, you keep, the price action is just so good. And um, the, the fact that GameStop didn't infect the market in this ridiculous it, it a little bit. I mean, all those mammoth talk the GameStop and um, AC, uh, M and oh, BlackBerry, just for that, the previous week, they definitely had an impact. And that's why the rest of the markets uh, kind of went down. And we talked about the negative correlation. But then everything reversed just a week later. Yeah. No, but I'm saying it was just like that kind of behavior is so frothy and stupid that you would think that may be a sign of a top. But uh, the, the, the money, just the amount of money printed and flowing into um, and interest rates just aren't high yeah, enough. Yeah, and their, their new stimulus check coming, and I mean, there's just so much, uh, you know, money. So in terms of setups, I'm trying to think of a few that, you know, I'm trying to just do a few speculative ones on my own that I don't share, just to participate in the speculation. Mm -hmm. So it's like, um, to just give myself some beta. But um, I mean, you gotta be a blind. A uh, fool not to be able to make money here, so I don't want to just yell out names. Anything stand out? It's it's uh, anything stand out to you? I mean, there, there's so many good setups. As, as I said, right now I see good setups in biotech, like Crisp, mm -hmm. Edit, and Nutella. Those three yeah. that I mentioned are, are good setups uh, yeah. for a bounce. Uh, next week, uh, we see a lot of strength in financials because of the spike in interest rates. Uh, and I think, for example, something like it's had a great year, like Rocket Mortgage, recent IPO, reasonably valued, super highly shorted, like 35% of the fall or something is short. So something for a swing. We might, we might see a, a bounce. Uh, I mean, look at their growth, which is incredible. Um, and hot, hot space as well. Um, there, there are a lot of setups right now. Um, okay. And I think we will continue to see. Um, rotations, uh, sector rotations. We said bull market corrects uh, through sector rotation. For example, last week, small cap definitely led. Uh, maybe next week we'll see the opposite. Maybe maybe large caps are going to wake up and they're, they're going to lead. I think we'll continue to see uh, that constant rotation between you know the various sectors uh, that will just keep propping up uh, the indices. The energy stocks were kind of Running too. I don't. I don't. I don't yeah, know. all the recovery stocks were super strong. It's very interesting right now. Yeah. On one side, you yeah. have the the COVID stocks waking up, and you call really, that really well. Yeah. Like Zoom and all the testing stocks. Um, no. Well, I think I think Zoom's interesting because I think what what people are going to find out about Zoom, we're getting the valuation for a moment because it's silly. Um, so you have to. Uh, it's never going to be cheap. It's the only time it's going to be cheap is if it if it screws up. So I think what you're seeing here is an incredible digestion. If we go to the weekly, yeah, on Zoom, definitely be going on the weekly. One of my eight eighties. And if you look at the incredible surge through um, COVID, almost a ten bagger, for it to just digest that very well and keep a relative strike 92 at that valuation. It's pretty interesting. And what I found from talking to my friends at SPACs and learning from my own SPAC is that billions and billions, maybe a hundred billion will be raised over Zoom. So forgetting schools, forgetting, because people are going to go back to school, period, end of story. Kids need to be in school. Um, same with classes, you know, educate college, you know, it's fun. It's kids can party and then just do their class on Zoom, but they want it. They want to interact. So school, you know, Zoom's going to lose some market share there. But in the financial industry, you know, Robinhood's not going back in the bottle. And Zoom as a vehicle for road shows, for raising capital, it, the financial industry, the, the stodgiest of all, most worried about um, theft and uh, what do you call it? Uh, cybersecurity. Um, 
the, 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 you're not going back in the box. The roadshow via Zoom is here to stay. So, and, and I think that'll show you that the, fi the, the financial will spend fortunes on cybersecurity. So that's a good point to bring up the cybersecurity. Yeah. And I think the financials, and we'll go through, I'll end with, you know, yeah, these are the cybersecurity stocks you're going to, but I think the financials uh, have found a new friend in Zoom. And it's a very streamlined and efficient way to raise capital, especially with social networks and um, <clears throat> instant feedback loops um, and so much capital out there. Um, the efficiency of a roadshow. So I think what you may see, Ivan, is the airlines, some of these industries that you thought, like Boeing's lagging all the other bounce backs. Uh, the airlines are, are, are lagging, even though the, the recovery in energy and the, you're seeing recovery in housing. I think the airlines are the ones long term where, yes, of course, I'm going to want to travel for, for, for uh, holidays and stuff. But I think Zoom for business is going to replace 50% of, of business travel, Microsoft Teams, Slack, et cetera. So I think you're starting to see that's a major uh, change. So, and then with uh, FinTech, I will say that like everything looks strong from PayPal to Square. And then in Latin America, you know, the ones I like, Stone and Pags are setting up again. Um, <clears throat> There's stone, uh, looked like it was rolling over, came right back. Pegs, looked like it was rolling over, came, came right back. So, so this FinTech, uh, and you're gonna see it in Robinhood, you're gonna see it in Plaid, you're gonna see it uh, is coming back. And then where's MasterCard and Visa? Uh, they're, they're trying yeah. to power too, they're building big bases. Yeah, so that is also a sign. So you can see that everything but airlines, and I, and I don't think it's just related to their bad because there's so much speculation, it's really the only industry that just yeah. is not bouncing. Even they're uh, starting to uh, act better. I mean, last week was better. Pretty, uh, better. But you can see the skepticism of like how much, people want to go out to restaurants, people want to spend money, but frivolous kind of entertainment travel, um, I think there's going to be a lot more local. Maybe it'll take more time. Yeah, that. I think it'll just take more time. Anyway, so that's, you know, the Zoom thing is I found somewhat interesting. And then obviously the fintechs uh, and the biotechs. Um, so if it has tech in it, I think you're still, that's still the way to play it. All right. Have a great week, my man. All right, Howard, you too. See you, everybody.